بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد Continue on in our study of Shara Sunnah by Imam Ahmed, the ninth lesson. It's very important for us to take a, a minute to review some of the main points and the importance of this treatise, as, as we can never get in enough reminders of why we study books like this in Aqidah and Creed. Because these treaties, they form the foundation of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah and the creed in the methodology, what distinguishes us from other groups and sects. And a treaties like this, it makes clear for us the Aqidah and how to be safe in our understanding of Islam. You know, how did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam understand and propagate Islam? This is what the Aqidah and Creed of Ahlul Sunnati Wal Jama'ah is about. And why it's important to know and understand it and propagate it. Because there are so many groups and sects out there today. Group and Jama'at, such and such and such and such. And where they go astray, it's because of who their Salaf is. Or do they have a Salaf? The new groups, they might not even go to any, anyone from early, earlier scholars and earlier scholarly traditions. And many of the groups and sects that have gone astray, they do have an origin with earlier groups and sects that went astray. You still have aspects of those various creeds and menahij or methodologies for understanding the religion. That it came from some early deviant or some early deviant sect or some early deviant creed or understanding of Islam. And this, is, this uh, drives home for us the importance of understanding the, the creed and the, and, uh, of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And going back to these early books of the Salaf of this Ummah, that's why they wrote these books. They wrote these books. Imam Ahmed wrote this, <clears throat> this treatise in order to preserve the religion because there was a threat to the religion. How was there a threat? There was a threat, especially in creed, that many groups began to go astray after the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, after the passing of the Sahaba, during the time of the Sahaba, you had the Qadariyya, you had the Khawarij. So those great imams of the sunnah, they began to clarify for us and leave behind things that Allah left to preserve the religion with. That they were blessed and we are blessed to be able to receive the benefits of their, their works. And, uh, and this book, Asul Sunnah, is one of those works. So just as a recap, some of the things that we've already uh, discussed in this treatise and that we need to take in that is a part of our uh, Asul Sunnah, a part of the Asul, the foundation of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the foundation of Ahl Sunnah Wal Jama'ah. What is their creed? One of the things is adhering to what the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een were upon. And Avoiding bid'ah, avoiding innovation, anything that if someone can't give you evidence for, for it and you've never heard about it in Islam, then be cautious. Because they should give you, if it relates to worship and, and things in creed, they should be able to give you some evidence for what they're doing, especially if they're someone who claims to be or it is asserted that they're a person of knowledge. Then it is imperative that you understand where they are, their sources are coming from. Is it co coming from Kitab Allah wa Sunnat Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Sahaba? That's a very important uh, aspect as well. Or is it, is it coming, is it in accordance with their, their madhab only? In accordance with their 
uh, what their imam said only, and all those other various ways of trying to understand uh, the religion that people deduce and gain an understanding of the deen. And leaving off debating them, leaving off debating, and we talked about the, the harm of debating and why the Salaf were against it. For one, it, gave a, it gives a, pl- a, a podium and a platform to Ahl Bid'ah. If you debate with them, you're giving them a chance to spread their da'wah, regardless of whether you're strong or not. So considering if in the situation where you're strong, and you know your creed and, and aqidah, and you know it with evidence, based on evidence from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But there are weak people in the audience, or weak people who are witnessing the debate. So therefore you've given an opening to spread their aqidah. Then how much more so if you are weak and you don't have the tools necessarily to debate? You're not articulate. Maybe you have the evidence and you are just not articulate at, and, not, and, and unable to articulate yourself and unable to express the correct creed. So then therefore, then the haq looks bad because you lost the debate because it was an issue of argumentation, not an issue of coming to the truth. Those are just some of the reasons why the Salaf, those, those narrations we have of Ibn Sirin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, where he would put his, his uh, or, or some of the Salaf, they would put their fingers in their ears. If a person of bid'ah and innovation would come to them and want to read even an ayat of the Qur'an, this is a verse of the word of Allah, the book of Allah, what harm is there in that? And these are the kind of arguments Ahl al would put forth. But he said, I'm afraid because the heart is so weak that perhaps, you know, I will begin to empathize with this person and empathize or, you know, and have love for them and begin to accept their arguments and their distortion of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creed of Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So this is why the Salaf were mutashaddid about not listening to Ahl al-Bid'ah. Also, and not sitting with Ahl al-Bid'ah, nor debating Ahl al-Bid'ah. Those are the primary things that we covered. We also covered that the Sunnah Yafasr al-Qur'an, as those great Imams of the Salaf said, that the Sunnah, it explains the Qur'an, so that we can't have one without the other. As Imam Babahari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned a third or fourth century scholar who was, uh, his fiqh was, you know, he was a, I don't know if he was a student of Imam Ahmed, but he was on the madhab of Imam Ahmed, Rahimahumullah Jami'an. And he said that the Sunnah is Islam, or Islam is the Sunnah and the Sunnah is Islam. And that you can't have one without the other. A sun, uh, al-Islam who was sunnah was sunnah to he islam So this is the madhab of the Salaf. And this was uh, our quick revision. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm nafi, ruskin tayyibah, wa amalim muttaqabbilan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be firm on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah protect us from every type of innovation and doubtful issue with regards to our creed and our conduct and our Islam in general. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.